Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. A couple of months ago, a company called TechZone Audio, or TZ Audio for short, reached out and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out a new microphone they had called the Stellar X2 Vintage. I did a little research online, watched a couple of videos, and wrote them back saying, yeah, I'd love to check the microphone out, and if I liked it, I'd do a demo video on it. There are other microphones in the same category, large diaphragm condenser microphones from other manufacturers that come in at a lower price point than this microphone, but at about $270 US at the time of this video, this still qualifies as a budget microphone. I've been using the X2 as my main voice over mic for all my YouTube videos and for all my online teaching for the past six weeks or so, and I'm very impressed with the sound quality, especially when you consider the cost of the microphone. If you look in the description box below, there's a link to the TZ Audio website where you can find out information on the X2 Vintage as well as their other microphones. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks again for watching and let's continue on. The question is, does it sound like the FET 47 or the Vintage Tube 47? While I'm not sure anything can really sound like either Neumann mic without the complete signal path used in the original recordings, as well as the recording spaces, I think it's more important to say what general characteristics the mic shares with the older mics. For a budget-friendly mic, it's what you can do with it and how it responds to sounds being picked up that is a good indicator if it can be used in the same way as the originals. The mic comes with a really nice padded hard shell case. You open up the case, it's nice and foamy inside, and harder foam here. It's got all your documentation. It's got a carrying case for the microphone, windscreen, shock mount. I like this kind of shock mount because you can push and it opens up. You can put the mic in there and it really clamps down well on it. And just so you can see the size of the mic, I have two of them. That's the size with my hands. I've got medium sized hands. And let's compare it to another mic. I've got Neumann 184 here, which is a much smaller mic, but you could just see the size difference between the two. Now, I want to talk about the windscreen it comes with. I really like it. The windscreen is, is very substantial. It's really thick. This is sort of the flimsy windscreen that comes with the Neumann K184 a mic that costs three times this with a really cheap foam windscreen. I like the economical size of the body along with the color scheme. The metal body is a kind of gray black and the metal screen has a nice silver matte look to it. The gray black of the body with the black foam windscreen works really well when the mic is on camera as it doesn't reflect light. I used to use the Earthworks icon for my voiceover mic, and while the icon is also a fantastic mic with a really cool Art Deco styling and a great sound, the shiny metal body reflects lighting and calls attention to itself in a way that the X2 Vintage does not. Also the shock mount and the microphone came wrapped in a little plastic bag which I took off for the show and tell here. If we take a look at the frequency response of all three microphones, with the exception of a little bit of a boost in the FET 47 between 8 and 10K, the X2 Vintage more closely resembles that FET 47 than it does the more vintage tube version. The X2 Vintage does start to filter out higher frequencies at a lower register than either Neumann mic. I think this was done to more closely achieve the warmth that a tube mic can give you and to focus the sound more on the mid-range, which gives us the perception of a thicker sound. That thick sound is what most of us think of when we think of a vintage tone. It also helps to remember that many vintage recordings were also done with the mic going through a tube console and onto magnetic tape, which adds a character to the sound. And even when we get into the 1970s with the advent of the Neve, the Trident, and Helios, and other transistor consoles, the microphones were also very often being processed by tube compressors such as Fairchild's and LA-2As. 
and these all add a certain kind of character to the sound. One thing to note before we start, I've got both microphones going into a stereo Grace microphone preamp. It's my cleanest, most transparent mic pre, and I thought that'd be a really good way to really actually hear what the microphone sounds like. I have Neve mic pre's, but that would start coloring the mic and not give you an accurate reflection of the actual sound qualities of the microphone. So for the first comparison video, I'm going to be reading a poem from the 1800s and switching back and forth between the two microphones. You won't know which microphone is which, but it will be indicated that a switch is happening on the screen. So let's take a listen. The Owl Critic by James Thomas Fields. Who stuffed that white owl? No one spoke in the shop. The barber was busy and he couldn't stop. The customers waiting their turns were all reading. The Daily, the Herald, the Post, little heeding, the young man who blurted out such a blunt question, not one raised a head or even made a suggestion, and yet the barber kept on shaving. Okay, so that's our first comparison, doing a little poetry reading there. And our first microphone was the Stellar. So let's take a listen to the TZ Audio, the X2. The Owl Critic by James Thomas Fields. Who stuffed that white owl? No one spoke in the shop. The barber was busy and he couldn't stop. The customers waiting their turns were all reading. The Daily, the Herald, the Post, little heeding. The young man who blurted out such a blunt question. Not one raised a head or even made a suggestion. And yet, the barber kept on shaving. Now, you can actually, you can hear a sound difference between the two. But the question is, do you like the sound of the Stellar? Or do you like the sound of the TLM? I like the sound of both. I could easily make either one work perfectly well. The Stellar has a very low noise. If I just were to play this one little section here, and let me mute my microphone here, and just I'll turn up the volume, and I'll just put this on loop. You'll hear that there's very little noise. Right, you can hear me taking a breath, but there's very little noise. It's a very clean microphone. All right, so that's interesting. Let's look at our second example. This is me playing acoustic guitar and singing a little blues tune. Please forgive my singing. Uh, couldn't get a vocalist here. And I would really be great to have a female vocalist. Maybe in the future I'll do that. So let's take a listen to this. Every day Every day I have the blues Every day Every day I have the blues When you see me worrying, baby You know it's you I hate to lose I'm gonna pack my bags Move on down the line I'm going to pack my bags, move on down the line. Think about worrying, baby, you know I've had my time. <laughs> All right, so again, I didn't tell you which was A and Mike B, but we did the same order as the first time. Let's take a listen. Every Hard to tell the difference between the two on the acoustic guitar. I would say that the TLM has a little bit smoother low end, but it's so it's so hard to tell. Every day, every day I have the blues. But there's a, a different kind of focus in the Stellar on my voice. I like that better than on the TLM. Every day I have the blues. Every day. Every day I have the blues. When you see me worrying, baby, you know it's you I hate to lose. Right. Okay, on our next comparison, I've got my Woodstock chimes, and this is a really good way to take a listen to the high end and how that 
translates out between both microphones. And again, I could be doing the same order. I could change the order around. We'll, we'll know afterwards. Here we go. Okay, this time I did change the order around. It's the TLM first. Right, so I think on this one, the TLM has a little bit crisper high end. But again, the Stellar takes some of the, you know, there might be some unpleasant frequencies in the upper register that the Stellar sort of brings out without having to EQ it. So I kind of like the way that sounds. TLM, Stellar, on the last comparison here, I'm going to be just strumming some chords on my acoustic guitar. It's a Martin 0001, and let's hear how the guitar sounds between each mic. And again, I'm not letting you know which mic is going first this time. Here we go. So this time again, the TLM first. So on this one, I would say that the TLM has a cleaner high end than the Stellar. And I'm wondering if I had repositioned the microphone a little bit, the Stellar, I could get away, do away with some of the low end by changing the position of the microphone and you get the same effect but it doesn't sound bad the stellar you can certainly eq that out Okay, on this example, I've got probably about 15 or 16 tracks that I've recorded to create this piece using just the X2. And I've got a variety of percussion instruments as well as guitars, bass guitar, mandolin, melodica, piano. And they've all been processed with some EQ and some compression. And I did turn on the mastering chain for this particular bit. So, you know, one of the things about a microphone is how well does it sound without any processing, but also how can you EQ and compress the microphone? Is it generally compatible with that kind of treatment? So it's really good to see that as well. So let's take a listen to this little track and we'll talk about it on the other side. <laughs>
All right. So I'll take it from the top of the session down. So let's solo the shaker. This is just a little egg, like a little plastic eggshell. And I've just got some of this focus right compression on it. Let's take off the mastering chain for a second. So this is with no processing at all, and the mastering chain is turned off. It's good because it's nice and clear without that kind of overbearing top end that the shaker can have. And then with the processing, And then the kunga is just this sort of kunga head drum that I've got. I forget who makes it. And I don't really play kungas, but I do know a couple of little rhythms here and there. And I've got on this the HEQ, just to cut off some of the low end to fit in with the mix, and just boost up where the slap is. And then that's also being compressed by this focus right. Let's listen to it with the processing and then without. No processing. Reverb is off too. You know, it's a nice round sound. You know, that's the thing about this. Now, the next bit is a 54 P bass reissue, a Japanese 54 P bass reissue by Fender. And I've got this, the bass boosted on this, right, going through the Fairchild and then through a limiter. I don't really play bass well, but it works fine in the track. Now, I'll play it without any processing, and then I'll turn the processing on. And this was played through a Car Rambler amplifier, which is kind of like a really nice Fender Deluxe guitar head. It's got one 12-inch speaker in it, and I had the microphone pointing right at the cabinet about two or three inches away from the cone. Whoops. So it actually sounds really nice on the bass. Let's see with the processing. Yeah, it just brought out a little, little bit of the bottom and a little bit of the top of the bass. And just evened out my dynamics. Okay, so let's listen to the acoustic guitar. And I've got four tracks of acoustic guitar. It's basically the same part doubled in each section. So the first section, I've got these two tracks. And then the second section, I've got these two tracks. And that pattern repeats for the rest of the song. And what I've done is I've played the same thing and I've panned them hard left and then hard right. And there is some processing on this track. I've got the HEQ just rolling off some of the low end like I typically would do. And look at this, I've cut off some of the high end as well to make it a little bit more smooth. And I'm using the Teltronics LA-2A. This is the UA plugin. So let's listen to it without the processing and then we'll pop the processing in. And now with the processing, You can see that the processing doesn't really, you know, it doesn't change the sound dramatically. It just gets rid of some frequencies in the low end, which allows the bass to sit in a little bit better. Continuing on. So now this pink track is the Eastman guitar. So the Eastman guitar is, I think it's the T484. It's styled after a small-bodied, semi-hollow G-style guitar with the numbers 339 on it. Let's take a listen to that. And this is also being played through the Car Rambler. I put the microphone just a little closer than with the bass. With the bass, I backed it off a little bit to let the sound develop. But with the guitar, I had it maybe an inch away from the speaker, real cloth, and parallel around just a little bit inside from the cone. Here we go. So we'll take it from the bridge because there seems to be a little bit more activity there or from the B section. And then we'll play it without the EQ and then with the EQ and the compression. Now with the EQ and compression.
let's take a listen to this little melodic figure on the guitar here, sort of Steve Cropper-esque kind of thing. Let me note effects. I've got the C4 and then a tape slap on this one and some reverb. A very round sound. I mean, the guitar sounds round as it is, but the mic really sounds beautiful on electric guitar. And now let's listen to the mandolin. And on the mandolin, again, C4. And just adding a little low end and attenuating around 4K on the UAD pull tech, but we'll listen without and then we'll pop it in and we'll turn off the reverb as well. So this is the first mandolin track and then we'll do the second mandolin track. So what I'm seeing as a pattern are these instruments that have can have sort of harsh high end like a mandolin, some acoustic guitar, electric guitar uh, can really benefit from this microphone because it sort of attenuates some of those harsh frequencies and it really fits in nicely. Let's take a listen to the melody part on the mandolin. And on this, I believe that there's just, right, just the pool tech, just attenuation around 4K and a little boost in the low end. Again, I like the way that sounds, really good. And I'm using, the, I have the Hammond Melodica, and basically, I believe the Melodica was sitting on a table top, and I had the microphone right above it, and I was playing it like I would play a piano with my hands this way, as opposed to holding it like this. Yep, again, Melodica is very harsh, so I'm really cutting down some of the high end and boosting some of the low end on this. But we'll listen without the processing, and then with, here we go. Works really well with the melodica because it's more of a trumpet kind of a sound. And then the, finally, the last instrument, I've got a seven and a half foot Yamaha piano and just one microphone, just placed it like sort of in the middle of the, of the harp. What well, didn't go crazy with positioning and I've got no EQ on this at all, just some reverb. So we'll listen to it without the reverb and then with the reverb. interesting. To me, that sounds like some old uh, Jobim records where he's playing piano and the way that the piano was recorded at the Rudy Van Gelder studios where they did use vintage Neumann microphones. Okay, so that's a look at the Stellar X2 Vintage by TZ Audio. You heard some comparison with a Neumann TLM-103, and then I did a whole track just using the one microphone with a wide variety of instruments. A couple of other things that I don't have access to that I think would be really well recorded by this microphone would be violins and a female vocalist. I think this microphone would do a great job with that. There's links in the description box below. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. I'm going to play this track again to get you out. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.